Hi, Abaki's users. Today we have an interesting topic for discussion. Consider this dart target. When you are playing dart, you aim to throw the darts close to the center as much as possible. Now consider the center point as the exact answer to our Abaki's analysis, which we must achieve. So, what are the difficulties to reach this point in your analysis? If your problem is linear, then it is easy to reach the center point as the converged solution. But if your problem is nonlinear, then it will be a little complicated to achieve convergence. You may need several attempts in order to solve your problem. But it is not impossible to reach convergence. By this introduction, let's get into this tutorial, which is about nonlinearity and convergence in Abaki's. As an introduction to nonlinear finite element and the related term convergence, this package includes five chapters and two workshops. The first chapter, titled Why Use FEA to Solve Problems, determines the finite element basis and its advantages. The second chapter, titled What is Convergence in FEA, introduces different kinds of convergence in finite element analyses which are necessary to know. The third chapter, titled What is Nonlinear Problem, explains when you have a nonlinear analysis and different sources of nonlinearity. Linear approximation is also discussed in this chapter. The fourth chapter, titled Properties of Linear and Nonlinear Problems, determines the linear and nonlinear features which must be considered in the analyses. The fifth chapter, titled Numerical Techniques for Solving Nonlinear Problems, introduces two numerical techniques which are typically used to solve nonlinear problems. At last, two workshops are provided in order to discuss the differences between linear and nonlinear analysis, and also implement different numerical techniques. Convergence case is also investigated in each example. Let's get more familiar with finite element analysis and its superiority over other methods. Most engineers and scientists studying physical phenomena are involved with two major tasks. First, Mathematical formulation of the physical process. This process requires background in related subjects and certain mathematical tools. The formulation results in mathematical statements, often differential equations, relating quantities of interest in the understanding and design of physical process. Development of the mathematical model of a process is achieved through assumptions concerning how the process works. Second, numerical analysis of the mathematical model. While the derivation of the governing equations for most problems is not unduly difficult, their solution by exact method of analysis is a, a formidable task. In such cases, approximate methods of analysis provide alternative means of finding solutions. We use numerical methods and a computer to evaluate the mathematical model and estimate the characteristics of the process. Among the different numerical methods, the finite element method is endowed with three basic features that account for its superiority over other competing uh, methods. First, a geometrically complex domain of the problem is represented as a collection of geometrically simple subdomains called finite element. Second, over each finite element, the approximation functions are derived using the basic idea that any continuous function can be represented by a linear combination of algebraic polynomials. Third, algebraic relations among the undetermined coefficients are obtained by satisfying the governing equations over each element. The algebraic relations are obtained for the whole model at the Evolution convergence is an important subject when we are talking about finite element simulation. This chapter declares convergence concept for you. Convergence of a sequence just means that its term eventually comes close to 
a particular value which is known as the limit of the sequence. In FEA convergence can imply multiple meanings such as mesh convergence, time integration accuracy, convergence of nonlinear solution procedure, solution accuracy. The solution of FEA is highly dependent on mesh size and the type of elements. Coarse meshes can yield inaccurate results. The computer resources required to run your simulation also increase as the mesh is refined. It is important that you use a sufficiently refined mesh to ensure that the results from your Avaca simulation are adequate. The numerical solution provided by your model will tend toward a unique value as you increase the mesh density. The mesh is said to be converted when further mesh refinement pr uh, produces a negligible change in the solution. After reviewing, reviewing the convergence, it is time to get more familiar with nonlinear problems in which the convergence is of great importance. In reality, the problems are always nonlinear. However, based on uh, assumptions of smallest uh, of certain quantities of the formulation, the problem may be reduced to a linear problem. Linear solutions may be obtained with considerable ease and less computational cost when compared to nonlinear solutions. Further, linear solutions due to various boundary conditions and load cases may be scaled and superimposed. In many instances, assumption of linearity leads to reasonable idealization of the behavior of the system. However, in some cases, assumption of linearity may result in an unrealistic approximation of the response or, or in uh, efficient use of the materials used. The type of analysis, linear or nonlinear, depends on the goal of the analysis and errors in the system's response that may be tolerated. In some cases, nonlinear analysis is the only option left for the analyst as well as the designer. Thus, when you start a simulation and you are unsure whether it should be a linear or nonlinear anal analysis, do not think about do I need to make this nonlinear? Instead, ask yourself can I ap approximate the response of the structure in this analysis as linear? To answer this question, first you need to know the sources of nonlinearity. There are three common sources of nonlinearity geometry, material, boundary. The geometric nonlinearity arises purely from geometric consideration, for example, nonlinear stray displacement re relations. The material nonlinearity is due to nonlinear uh, constitutive behavior of the material of the system. The boundary nonlinearity may arise due to changing initial or boundary conditions. Various type of nonlinearities will be discussed through some examples. In this chapter, we review the features of linear and nonlinear problems in order to prevent miscalculations when you encounter these kinds of problems. A linear problem has the following features, existence and uniqueness. Consider a linear problem force displacement diagram. Existence means that for each load F1, there will be always a, at least one solution U1, while uniqueness says that the solution is the only solution. Scaling, which means if a force F1 causes a displacement U1, then the force at times F1 causes a displacement at times U1. Superposition says that if force F1 causes a displacement U1 and force F2 causes a displacement U2, then the force F1 plus F2 causes a displacement U1 plus U2. For a nonlinear problem, the features are exactly opposite of linear ones, which means non existence and no uniqueness. For some load F, there may be none, one, many, or any infinite number of solutions U. No scaling. If force F causes a displacement U, then the force at times F might not cause a displacement at times U. No superposition. 
if force F1 causes a displacement U1 and force F2 causes a displacement U2, then the force F1 plus F2 might not cause a displacement U1 plus U2. Moreover, the nonlinear problems are history dependent. In a linear problem, the solution U is determined by the current value of the external load P. In a nonlinear problem, the unique solution U at time T is determined by the entire load history of PT. As you see here in the load de deflection diagram, you need to know the loading history in order to determine the unique deflection. Here we have a nonlinear force displacement behavior and an applied force FC. We are going to implement Newton Raphson method to find the displacement corresponding this force value. We start by an initial guess for displacement as U0. By this initial guess, the related force value is determined as the intersection point on the force displacement diagram which differs from the applied force. From this point, we draw a tangent line to the diagram that intersects the applied force line. The slope of this line is the denoted by TU0, which is a representation of tangent matrix. The distance shown here is the residual for the first iteration. From the intersection of the applied force line and the tangent line, a vertical line is drawn to indicate the next displacement value. The distance between the new and old values of displacement shows the delta u. The previous procedure must be rep repeated for the new displacement value as well. The U2 is also obtained. This procedure must be continued until we reach to the converged solution we expect. This was a graphical re representation of Newton Raphson technique. Now we go toward the quasi Newton technique and compare these two methods. The quasi-Newton method differs from the full Newton-Raphson method in how frequently the stiffness matrix is recalculated. In the full Newton-Raphson method, the stiffness is recalculated in every iteration, but in the quasi-Newton method, it is not recalculated in every iteration. Thus, the quasi-Newton method can provide substantial savings of computational F effects if the number of iteration does not increase. In Abacus, the quasi-Newton method reforms the stiffness matrix every eight iterations. This uh, default value can be modified by the user.